Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart, joined today by two in-house fight experts, Mr. Kevin Dolan at the Sports Wolf 83 on Twitter, Yanni the Greek at Greek underscore Gambler. Guys, we're going to talk about Fury, Fury Wilder here in a little bit in another video, but this video this weekend, Saturday, February 29th, we have Mikey Garcia versus Jesse Vargas. Now. We both know I'm not a big boxing fan. UFC has kind of taken over the fight world. Boxing was so big in the 90s, and we've kind of seen it drop off. But there is some serious value here from a betting perspective in boxing. Kevin, I'll start with you. Talk to me about this fight. I mean, the, the main fight in this card, obviously, Jesse Vargas and Mikey Garcia. It's, I'll say this now, it's not a fight I'm going to be involved in. Okay. Because it's just the odds are right where they should be. We've seen Mikey Garcia. He's only fought once at this weight, 147. Last time out against Errol Spence. Errol Spence, you know, beat him from pillar to post. It was a complete shutout. Uh, the size difference is obviously critical for this. Mikey Garcia is a master boxer, but this is two weight divisions above where he probably campaigns the best at. So Jesse Vargas, you know, is Jesse Vargas Errol Spence? No, but he's still a good fighter. So at minus, you know, I think it's like minus 500. I can't get involved in, you know, Mikey Garcia at those odds. I was looking at, I can't see a stoppage. You know, Jesse Vargas has never been stopped. Okay. Um, and by the same token, I think Mikey Garcia is good enough defensively not to get stopped. But again, will the fight go the distance? Minus 400. I don't want to pay that. So probably a lean to Mikey Garcia by decision. Minus 225. But even at that, I think Jesse Vargas is a shot in this fight. So, you know, the main, you know, I have a couple of players in the undercard, but definitely... I don't want to get involved. You know, okay, we'll get fight. to your undercard plays here in a minute. VR, I know that you have a play on this one, and you told me before we started, it's dog or pass. Why is that? For sure. A lot of combat sports bettors make the mistake of not even looking at the betting line and just trying to predict the outcome. Oh. Meaning they like the Mikey Garcia, then they look what the price is, and they're going to bet it regardless. The, the, the mistake is doing it that way. you got to... First, ask yourself, what does that price mean? What does minus 600 mean? I mean, it's a huge it's Minus a lot of 600 talk. simply means that Mikey Garcia has to win this fight 86% of the time for you to break even. So if he could win this fight seven out of 10 times, it's a losing bet. Even if he wins this bet, doing that long term, you will go broke. You're taking the worst of it. And a lot of casual combat sports bettors don't grasp that, that you're looking for mistakes in pricing, you're not really looking to just predict the outcome well, of the think, fight. I think that's fair. We always say in every other sport, we're betting numbers, the not num teams. Exactly, exactly. And you do that with, with point spreads. How much yes. better is team A than team B? And it's not done enough in combat sports. And I think if you look at it that way, you'll see why I think there is value on Jesse Vargas. Because at plus 400, he has to win this fight one out of five times, 20% of the time, for it to be profitable, a little more than that. I think he does have that much of a chance, only because Mikey Garcia has been a power puncher his entire career until he moved up in weight. He's gone to a decision five of his last seven, in fact, four straight decisions. He started at featherweight. He's now up to welterweight, where with Jesse Vargas, he started at light welterweight. He's going to have a huge um, height advantage on him. His size, obviously, they're going to weigh the same prior to the fight, but he's, he's just the bigger guy. Um, and again, I don't think Mikey Garcia is going to be able to finish him. And for me, I think Jesse Vargas has a chance to outpoint him. I really do. Uh, His he, only losses are to Pacquiao yeah. and Timothy Bradley. Yeah, and he almost oh, wow. stopped Bradley. Yeah, they're the only yeah. two guys that beat him. So for me, I just don't think the price is justified. Okay. He, he doesn't have a 95% chance of winning this. And that's pretty much what you have to conclude. Because even if you say he's got a 90% chance of winning this, then your margin's only 4%. I mean, when you're the room laying for six, error isn't there. When you're laying 6 to 1, there's no room I, for I error. I need to know that the guy's going to knock gotta somebody out. You got to be pretty sure quickly. exactly. Yes. There's no room for error when you're laying chalk like that. That's why I think it's a dog or pass situation. Perfect. All right, Kevin, you mentioned you have a play on the co-main event. Yeah, my main play. Actually, it turns out it's my only play now because the other play that I had got canceled. Okay. I had uh, Murak Gassiev and Jerry Forrest. I like the over on that, but Gassiev pulled out the fight seven days ago. So the only player that I have left is on the co-main event. Now, that's it's a good the, fight. It's the best fight in the card in terms of, you know, what I think. You know, it's Cal Yafei. He's the WBA champion fighting just an absolute legend of the sport. Like, Chocolatito used to be pound for pound number one, you know, and he moved up like four weight division, started out so low, minimum weight, kept moving up. But obviously, there's... There's a reason why there's weight divisions in boxing. As good as you are, there's a you're, ceiling. You know, you're, you're eventually going to come up against, 
You know, a guy, and he, and he fought a guy called So Wrong Versailles, eventually moved up. So Wrong Versailles was even big for the weight. You know, he hit like a Mack truck. And they fought the first time. Very close fight. I think I actually scored it for Chocolatito in that fight. You know, pretty close, but he lost the decision. They had the rematch, and Rung Vasai just ran him over far too big. So we're seeing, you know, the, the, the kind of decline of Chocolatito in a way. He, I mean, he's still a young guy, age-wise, but he's been in so many wars, so many battles, that people are seeing a decline. Now, he's the underdog coming into this fight. I believe the odds are pretty close. I think he's like a plus 140. But um, I still like him. Kalyafe is a very good fighter. He's undefeated. But at the end of the day, he's never been in. He's fought some good fighters like Shoashida and David Carmona, but he's never fought a guy who brings to the table, you know, what Chocolatito does. So if Chocolatito's anywhere where he once was, and he comes, I mean, he's, he stopped his last two opponents, so he's trying to come back. So if he shows up, he's going to be far too much for Kalyafai. I still think it's an excellent fight, but Kalyafai, two fights ago, three fights ago, fought a guy called Israel Gonzalez. Really struggled. I thought he lost the fight in Monaco. If you can't beat Israel Gonzalez, you're not going to beat Roman Gonzalez. So, if, yeah, if Roman Gonzalez turns up, the play that I made, I think Calafay is very defensively good. So, I actually like the stoppage, Roman Gonzalez stoppage rounds 11, 10, 11, 12. Okay. And I've seen that anywhere from like 10 to 1 to 16 to 1. Those are the odds. So, I mean, if you can get 16 to 1, I'd even play it at 10 to 1, to be honest, you know, plus 1,000. But if you can get, you know, 1,600, that's what I'm on. I'll be making like a 2% play on that, you know, because it can only be a 2% play because it's, you're still, your chances are slim, but I think those odds are great. I can see him getting to him late and stopping. Okay, perfect stuff from both guys. Wager Talk TV users get $25 in Wager Bucks added to your account after your first purchase at wagertalk and sportsmemo.com.